California dreaming about you. Hey guys, Simcolor here, and today I'm going to show you how you can implement professional animations, timeouts, and the elements, how you can show and hide them and many other things that are to come in the future. So we are going to use Wix for this and the reason is because Wix recently launched a, a feature called Wix, Wix Code. And uh, Wix Code allows us to write our JavaScript into a Wix uh, website, which is amazing. So um, yeah, this will allow us to basically make our own databases, make our own animations, make dynamic pages, and all of this without having to worry about the design elements uh, of the um, of the page, which, which is what Wix is all about. So it is amazing that you can now uh, just focus on the code and make really building a website truly fast and straightforward, which is important for people that are launching projects. So yeah, let's do this and enjoy. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we are in the landing page of the Wix code web page. Uh, and in here you'll spend a lot of your time because it has everything that you need and I'm going to scroll to the bottom and click on explore resources because in here you have the API you have examples you have video tutorials which will come really use, uh, useful uh, whenever you want to do something specific that you don't know how to do and it, in the API references we have everything that you need and so it is great it is really detailed and you can as you can see you can get all the information that you want through here so yeah use this it will be your best friend even though it isn't really hard to do it the the logic behind the code is or better yet the the code itself is a bit different than normal javascript so sometimes uh, you'll have to, to come here and just figure out how you should do things but it is extremely easy and extremely straightforward. So now I'm going to show you my uh, web page, which is this one right here. And as you can see, it, it looks great, but it doesn't have, uh, it isn't captivating because it doesn't have moving elements. It doesn't, and doesn't have anything that pops out. And so that's what I want to do. And uh, the two things that we are going to do is whenever, first of all, whenever we hover this button, you'll make this uh, moon uh, fade in or pop in or whatever, some cool animation to make it uh, really stand out. And we'll have this rocket right here, uh, like kind of moving into position. And we'll make a cool animation for that. So you'll see it in a second. So I'm going to show you just how you can make some cool uh, use of some of the cool features that you have with Wix code. So let's get right on with it and go into the editor page that you get for your website. So in here you have everything and you can move around everything. And if you've worked with Wix before, you'll understand it. Uh, if not, it is extremely easy. You simply play, add items to whatever you'd like and it would look awesome. And I use a template for this and base my web page all around it. So now let's go into the tools and open up properties panel. And it will pop up a panel right here that has the information of every item where you click it. So you can get set the IDs, you can set if the item is hidden on load, collapsed on load, and then you have a series of events that you can uh, import to make um, trigger some kind of response that you want. And these events will be right here in the home page code. I'm going to delete this right here and I'm going to uh, explain to you what this uh, does. So all the code that you write will end up right here. You can, uh, if you click on this arrow right here, you can see that you can add files and whatnot. And this is just so that you can uh, make your code smaller and make JavaScript files, uh, and you then can import it inside this on-page code. So yeah, everything will end up eventually right here. And uh, right now it is basically empty and all that you have is the onready function. And this function is triggered anytime the, the page loads up. So if you want to start 
right off by doing running some kind of code as the, the user types in the link and enters, um, you can you simply paste the code right here. But right now, what we want is to trigger an event of whenever we uh, hover this button, the moon will uh, fade in. So all that you have to do, and I'm going to make this a tiny bit smaller, is go click on the button and then go and click on mouse in. So this is triggered whenever we simply move the button in, uh, the cursor into the button, and we don't need to click it. Uh, and we can go ahead and click the plus sign and it will and click enter and it will automatically create a function that will be called whenever that happens so it is really cool we can erase this comment right here we don't need it so anytime we move the mouse into the button this function will be triggered and any code that we have inside it will be uh, triggered uh, as well so let's uh, get on with it and the first thing that we want to do is to make the moon fade in and it is extremely easy and all that we have to do is to say dollar sign w and this dollar sign w is the uh, the best way to understand it is it is the global variable of the site so anytime you want to ac access uh, an element you must say dollar sign w and then simply place the ID of the element. So let's say like this and place it within that. And now we must give the, our moon an ID. And we do that simply by clicking the moon and uh, going inside here and giving it the name moon. So moon. And now if, when we want to find the element moon, we simply say hashtag moon. And that's it. We have access to the moon and everything that it does. So we, as I've said before, we want to show it with an animation. So we simply say show and open uh, parenthesis. And then we say specify the animation that we want. And in, in this case, it will be expand in. OK. So yeah, we have a type there, okay. So now let's just test it and it is working for sure because it is a, a really simple line of code. But you can see one thing that, well, the moon, it is already there. So when we try to uh, move in the mouse, it doesn't go, it doesn't show up because it is already there. And there's a, a, a simple way to fix this. And it is just by clicking the moon in this case Let's minimize that and bring up the properties panel and as you can see you can set even on load and that's uh, exactly what we need so let's click it and now as you can see no moon shows up and when we move the mouse in it pops up it is exactly what we wanted so yeah awesome now let's move on and actually start working on the ships uh, appearing in succession so what I'm going to do is to have multiple images of ships and from time to time show up or hid uh, or hide the ships that are behind. And you'll understand it in a second. Let's just make copies of this ship. We can... Uh, three is enough. So yeah, let's give, it the, let's give them names that are uh, reasonable and not this so let's go inside here and open up our properties panel so ship one let's give it ship two and this is just so that we can more easily find out which ships we must uh, show or hide so it will first show the ship three then the ship two and the ship one and uh, whenever the animation of show uh, and we are going to hide the ship 3 and the ship 2 and the ship 1 will uh, be there. This is just to make a cool succession uh, and so it will look extremely cool. I've tested it and it, yeah, it looks amazing and you are free to, to use it, obviously. So let's go in, inside here and let's create a function. 
function and let's say move ship always try to give reasonable names to to your functions and uh, to your variables it is extremely important so okay we can create a function right here and we can call it whenever the button is uh, is trig triggers the event mouse in so now what we want to do is to use a timer in order to figure out uh, in how much time you want the in how can i say it so we don't want to just fade in all of these ships right away we want them to fade in but we want first fade in the the ship three then the ship two and then only the the ship one so you can do this by using a timer and it is uh, really easy to to use to make use of because yeah it is just a, a timer and you can set exactly how much time you want for each uh, chip to to take so let's do it and to use a timeout all you have to do is say set timeout and open up brackets open up brackets again inside the, those brackets not outside make sure you do it right and then simply say equals bigger than sign and then we open up brackets and let me just go inside here and make it a tiny bit bigger okay that's it and simply close with a semicolon and there we go so now we can set the delay that we want for this timer and in this case for the first image it will be five uh, 500 and this 500 the time that you put in here which is the delay uh, in which this timeout is called um, is divided by uh, a thousand and what i mean by that is that this is not 500 seconds or 500 minutes this is half a second so if you want to think in seconds and uh, so you can divide this by a thousand and it becomes 0 0.5 seconds okay so that's the the whole logic behind the set timeout it will call the function inside after a certain time in this case uh, 500 milliseconds or 0 0.5 seconds and yeah so now what we want to do is to first of all show the first ship after the 500 millisecond mark and so you can simply do this by saying dollar sign w open up the the things right there then hashtag ship three okay and make sure you always finish with a another quotation mark it you must have a, a beginning and an end that's all obviously important and then we simply say show with the animation name that we want and it, in this case we'll do fade in just to make it different from the, the 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 moon one and then we say then and i'll explain to you in a second what this uh, the reason why i'm doing this then and open up uh, equal uh, major sign then brackets just like you did for the timeout and close that up and we will use this function then uh, to make the the chip fade out once the fading is uh, done so this then is always called whenever the animation for the fading finishes and that way we can get a cool effect of fading in and fading out right away that's a really cool uh, effect that you can place in your uh, website so let's simply grab the uh, chip variable and we'll do hide instead of show so yeah we want to hide the, the object not show it again and open up the quotation marks and say fade out to make it uh, do the exact opposite of this right here so this will fade in and then fade out uh, right away 
and we can test this it will work but just so that you can see it and once again uh, we didn't uh, hide on load so let's get back to the editor and let's set this to actually every one of them because they all must be hidden on load so let's say here and hidden on load hidden on load and hidden on load so that's it let's go into preview and as you can see nothing shows up and we, when we hover the, the button it shows up and then disappears Okay, so after that, uh, we'll add the code for the chip 2 and the chip 1. So we can simply copy this. And we can actually copy it to, twice. So yeah. And now let's do the same thing for the chip 2. Simply change the names. And now the delay will be different so that first shows up the chip 1, uh, the chip 3 actually and then only the chip 2 after some time. So for that we'll set the delay to 1000, which is 1 second. And for the, for, uh, the, the chip 1, which I'm going to change the name right now, we'll set the delay to 1500. And we'll make it a, a change because the chip 1, this one right here, will only fade in and won't fade out. So let's remove the then don't forget to add the semicolon at the end. And now let's test it and see if everything shows up. But it will because, well, this code is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and preview and hover the button. It fades out, fades in, and this doesn't go anywhere. And there we go. So the the website already looks that much better because that it has more interaction with the user and that captivates the user into looking into it and it just looks better looks more professional it looks awesome so yeah in this uh, lesson we learn how we can use the timeouts how we can use the elements how we can hide them how we can show them how we can implement animations and how we can do some cool things like this one with the rocket, which is uh, really truly awesome and you are more than free to use it in your website if you want to which you, you probably will so yeah if you have anything that's, that you want to do more specific then go straight into the api reference and you'll have everything there that you might need and uh, just one thing after you that implementing implemented all of this don't forget to to publish your websites and after this everyone will be able to see the cool things that you've done with just a few lines of code with 25 lines of code which aren't even that many because we didn't write these lines right here the on ready so it is more like i don't know 19 18 lines of code so that's pretty amazing in and of itself so yeah in the next lesson, we'll continue to work with Wix in order to uh, make everything that we need. Uh, we'll work with database, as I've said in the beginning of this lesson. We'll work uh, with a lot of the cool features that uh, Wix has, but we won't touch all of them. Unfortunately, we don't have the time, but we'll uh, focus on the most important ones and the biggest ones so that you can start off by having a cool website of your own for your project, which is extremely important, as I've said. That's all for today, but if you have any question that you'd like me to answer in the next video, then please leave a comment down below with your question. If I can't put it in a video, then I'll be sure to answer uh, to all of your questions down below, so make sure to do it. And if you are interested in building your own Wix website, then go to wix.com and it, it is free. You can try it. You can see if it fits your needs. And yeah, that's all for today. I hope to see you again tomorrow and ciao.